Pneumothorax refers to the presence of air in the pleural cavity. Primary spontaneous pneumothorax may occur in an apparently healthy person who has no other signs or symptoms of a disease process that may have caused the pneumothorax. Observation and oxygen therapy may be the only treatments that are necessary for patients who have a small primary spontaneous pneumothorax. However, for patients with pneumothorax and clinically significant breathlessness, active intervention is required. This may include needle aspiration or the placement of a chest tube. This video reviews the techniques and equipment required to perform needle aspiration of primary spontaneous pneumothorax in adults. Needle aspiration is appropriate for patients with their first episode of primary spontaneous pneumothorax. These patients should have no evidence of underlying lung disease and should either exhibit breathlessness or have a pneumothorax, consisting of a rim of air of more than 2 cm measured at the level of the hilum. Aspiration is contraindicated when a patient has a traumatic pneumothorax or when tension pneumothorax is suspected. Hemodynamic instability also constitutes a contraindication. You should also avoid using needle aspiration in patients with underlying pulmonary disease, a history of recurrent pneumothorax, bilateral pneumothorax, or a bleeding disorder. Numerous devices can be used to perform needle aspiration. You should be familiar with the specific devices available at your institution. In this video, we will use an intravenous over the needle catheter to demonstrate the procedure. Begin by gathering the necessary equipment. The equipment needed for aspiration includes a 16-gauge or 18-gauge over-the-needle catheter tubing with a three-way stopcock, and a 50-milliliter or 60-milliliter syringe to administer local anesthesia. You will need 1% or 2% lidocaine, a 10-milliliter syringe, and 22-gauge or 25-gauge needles. You will also need sterile gloves, a protective or sterile gown, a face mask, chlorhexidine or another antiseptic solution a sterile preparation kit, and a sterile drape. Explain the procedure to the patient and obtain written informed consent, confirming the patient's identity, the indication for needle aspiration, and the absence of contraindications. Then confirm that the patient has no allergy to lidocaine and verify whether the pneumothorax is on the right side or the left side. Place the patient in a semi-supine position with the torso at a 30 to 45 degree angle to allow the air to collect at the apex of the lung. Administer oxygen and monitor the patient's pulse oximetry, heart rate, and blood pressure. An intravenous catheter should also be in place. Finally, provide the patient with a face mask, wash your hands with an alcohol-based formulation, and then examine the patient to determine the location of landmarks for the procedure. The preferred location for placement of a needle for aspiration of pneumothorax is the second intercostal space, in the midclavicular line. On the side with the pneumothorax, begin by locating the second and third ribs. The second rib is the first palpable rib that can be felt just below the collarbone. Then locate the third rib. The second intercostal space is the area between the second and third ribs. Next, identify the middle of the clavicle and the midclavicular line and the intersection of the midclavicular line. And the second intercostal space is the correct place to insert the needle for aspiration of pneumothorax. It can be helpful to mark the needle insertion site with a skin marking pen. Use the checklist to make sure that all the necessary equipment and supplies are ready for use and within easy reach. Put on a face mask, a protective or sterile gown, and sterile gloves. Use chlorhexidine or another antiseptic solution to clean the patient's skin in the area where the aspiration will be performed, and position the sterile drape. Aspirate lidocaine into the 10 ml syringe for use as a local anesthetic agent using a 25-gauge needle. Inject a wheel of lidocaine at the superior edge of the third rib at the midclavicular line. Switch to a 22-gauge needle and anise to tie the deeper layers of tissue by inserting the needle at an angle perpendicular to the skin. Before injecting the anesthetic always aspirate the site to make sure the needle has not entered the blood vessel. Progress with the needle just over the top of the third rib through the intercostal muscles in the direction of the pleural space. This will prevent injuries to the intercostal vessels and nerves, which lie just below the rib cage. Once you have inserted the needle through the intercostal space, continue to aspirate. When you penetrate the pleural space, air bubbles will appear as you aspirate. 
Before you remove the needle note the depth of penetration, you will use this depth as a reference point. When you insert the over-the-needle catheter, connect the over-the-needle catheter to the 10 milliliter lidocaine syringe, which should be partially filled with the remainder of the local anesthetic. Stabilize the skin with the non-dominant hand and puncture the skin with the catheter using the same landmarks that you used for the local anesthetic. Continue to aspirate with the syringe slowly progressing in the direction of the pleural space. Again, when the needle penetrates the pleural space, air bubbles will appear in the syringe. At this point, move the needle forward a few millimeters to allow the catheter tip to fully penetrate into the pleural space. The appearance of air bubbles will confirm that the catheter has progressed into the pleural space. Ask the patients to exhale or cough to prevent air from being sucked into the pleural cavity. Remove both the catheter needle and the 10 milliliter syringe. Then immediately cover the opening of the catheter with your finger to prevent the entry of additional air into the pleural cavity. Attach the tubing with the three-way stopcock to the catheter. Use the 50 or 60 millimeter syringe to gently aspirate the air from the pleural space, evacuated through the side port into the ambient air. The correct manipulation of the three-way stopcock is crucial, as the connection of a sight port to the ambient air will entrap air in the pleural space and increase the pneumothorax. When air is being aspirated from the pleural space, the stopcock should be opened between the patient and the syringe but closed to the ambient air. To evacuate the air into the ambient air you must turn the stopcock so that the syringe is connected with the environment, but not with the patient. Make sure that the pleural space is never connected with the environment while you're turning the stopcock. The volume of air that is aspirated can be determined by counting the number of syringes evacuated. If more than 2.5 liters have been evacuated, the procedure should probably be stopped because such a large volume suggests that there is an air leak. Continue manual aspiration until you cannot aspirate any more air. Remove the catheter. Put a sterile dressing on the site of insertion. And order a post-procedural chest radiograph to be obtained with the patient in an upright position. When needle aspiration is successful, the patient's symptoms will improve, and no pneumothorax or only minimal residual pneumothorax should be visible on the post-procedural chest film. Most patients are ready for discharge, approximately 6 hours after the procedure if a second post-procedural chest radiograph shows no indication that the pneumothorax has reappeared. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and support us to learn more clinical procedure in emergency medicine.